Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All right, so this is problem 7.31. And this problem, we are asked to solve problem 7.5 and 7.9 using Morse circle. In 7.5, we are asked to find the principal planes, the principal stresses. In 7.9, the orientation of the maximum in-plane shear stress. And what is the maximum in-plane shear stress value? And when we arrived at this shear stress value, what is the corresponding normal stress? So the first step that we want to do is we want to take the this stress element and the values that we are given and input it into our Mohr circle coordinate. So first thing, let's identify this uh, coordinate system. So on the right, we have positive uh, normal stress and positive normal stress mean tension. On the left hand side, we have negative normal stress, which represent compression. Uh, below this horizontal uh, axis, we have the positive shear. And positive shear means that it that this is the shear stress that caused the element to rotate in the counterclockwise. On the top, you will have negative shear and it will cause the uh, stress element to rotate this way or clockwise. So this is the first thing that we have in here. So next, let's take a look at the X face right here. Now the X phase face in here have two coordinates. It have stress, normal stress, and shear stress. And the shear stress, the normal stress is given to us as 60, but because it is compression, we will put it minus 60. And 35 is positive. Why? If you take this 35, uh, th this vector that represents this the 35 shear force and place it at the edge of the stress element, it will cause the element to rotate counterclockwise. And we mentioned that counterclockwise is positive shear. That's why it's positive. So now let's plot the value, th this coordinate. So we said minus 60, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So right here. And 35 is positive, so we said 10, 20, 30, 35. So we can draw a line from here, a line in here, to give us the x phase point. That will be our normal stress in the x phase, and this is our shear stress in the x phase. So next we will take a look at the y phase. Now y phase have two coordinates, the normal stress and the shear stress. The normal stress is, is given here as 40, and this 40 is compression, that's why it's negative. The 35 shear is negative. Why? If you take this vector that represents the 35 megapascal shear stress and place it at the edge in here, it will cause the element, stress element to rotate clockwise. That's why it's negative. So now we will plot this minus 40 minus 35. So here is minus 40 and right here is minus 35. And this will give us the y phase point, minus 40, minus 35. Normal stress in the y direction and the shear stress on the y phase. Next, we will connect these two points together. Then we will draw a circle using these two points. And here we constructed our Mohr circle. So this is the first step that, that you do. You get your X phase and Y phase coordinate, plot it in the Mohr circle, 
you, you draw the diameter and then draw the circle. We are asked to find the principal plane. So what is the principal plane? The principal plane is we want to know how much should we rotate this diameter or this radius where at a, a certain angle to reach maximum and minimum normal stresses, or we call it principal stresses. So when you rotate this, 2 theta prince, uh, it will give you this one. So, so this point, minus 60 to 35, will move all the way in here. So that will be your point. The principal stress for the x face and then this point will go all the way down here, and this will, will be your principal stress in the Y face. So what we want to find is we want to find the average stress. Average stress is sigma X plus sigma Y over 2. Sigma X is minus 60, and sigma Y is minus 40. Divided by 2 will give you minus 50. So it will be right here. And the reason why we found the this uh, average so because as you can see we want to use this triangle right here so let's draw it so we said here minus 60 and here minus 50 and this distance right here is 35 and then this is the radius of the circle or the hypotenuse of the triangle this radius uh, when you find its length it it length represent tau max the maximum shear. And here we are interested in finding the angle, 2 theta principle. Uh, to, to find it, we can use trigonometric identity, and we can use tangent of an angle is equal to opposite 35 divided by 10. The length of this side is 10. To solve it, we take the inverse of 10, and then we found to be 74 degree to find to convert it from more circle to real world we we divided by two and it will give us an angle of 37 and as you can see this is rotating clockwise clockwise so the element that we have we said 60 40 these are the shear stresses given to us. And this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. So this 37, we're going to rotate it clockwise. So we rotated the element 37 degree. These are their two new axes. This one right here will represent the, in the x-face, which is this one the stress the normal stress in the in the x phase when you rotate at 37 degree and the normal stress in in the y phase when you rotate the element 37 degree clockwise then next after we uh, we want to find the principal stresses the principal stresses are these two stresses right here so the principal stress in the, x uh, in the x phase is equal to the average, which is right here, and the principal stress in the x direction is to the left of it, toward the negative side, so that's why we have negative radius, which is this one right here. And the same thing for the normal stress in the y phase. That would it will be the average plus the radius makes sense now to find the radius the radius is the maximum shear stress it's it will be 10 squared plus 35 10 squared plus 35 it will give you 36.4 and this answers the question uh, answers letter d so we will plug in the radius and we will find that uh, the principal stress in the x phase will be 86.4, and the 
and the principal stress in the Y phase will be minus 13.6 megapascal. Both of them are compressive uh, stresses, so we, we can erase this, minus 86.4, and we can erase this, and minus 13.6. So as you can see, we can figure out which one is the maximum, which one is the minimum. Obviously, this is the maximum, and this is the minimum. The ma maximum principal stress, minimum principal stress. Uh, in C, we are asked to find the orientation of the plane of maximum in-plane shear stress. So we want to know how, how much should we rotate the element to reach maximum shear stress. So we, what we want to do is we want to rotate to get an angle of 2 theta shear stress because when you draw a uh, perpendicular line from the center of the circle all the way to the edge of the circle this right here will be your radius your maximum uh, shear stress which what we found in the previous uh, slide to be 36.4 so when you write the coordinate of this point it will be minus 50 and 36.4 and the same thing will be for the other side and this one will be minus 50 minus 36.4 and you can see from this that uh, we can reach maximum shear stress on a stress element when the two normal stresses in the x and the y face are the average normal stress of the stress element as you can see minus 50 minus 50 so right here to find this angle it's simple so we know that from the no, uh, normal stress axis to the radius or tau max this is 90 degree in the previous slide we found the 2 theta principle so it will be my 90, 90 degree minus 2 theta principle to 74 the difference is 16 so we convert it to real world it will give you 8 degree and this one will be what we are rotating counterclockwise counterclockwise so we need to rotate counterclockwise so let's rotate the x-axis 8 degree counterclockwise this will be our new axis here we rotated our stress element this will be 50 our average normal normal stress negative compression and and this is the answer this is the question they ask us on E, the corresponding normal stress when we have the maximum shear stress. Fifty. And here the shear stress is it up or down? Think about it. So uh, fifty in the x axis or the new x axis, let's say, which is this one right here. The 36.4 is positive. Positive mean counterclockwise. So again, if you take this vector and place it at the edge in here, it will cause the element to rotate counterclockwise. So the direction of this shear stress is correct. Same thing for 50 in the Y face. So the 50, so this is the 50 in the Y face, minus 36.4. And minus will cause the stress element to go clockwise. So we need this one to go in this direction, which will cause the element to go counterclockwise. And this will be our maximum shear stress, which is 36.4. Thank you very much. Have a good day.